I'm Frank Sherwin, and I'm here at the Noah's Ark exhibit at the Discovery Center of the ICR in Dallas. What we're going to do right now is to answer some of the questions that many people have regarding the nature of Noah's Ark and how Noah got those animals on the Ark and what happened during that year-long flood. For example, was Noah's Ark big enough to hold all the representative animals that Scripture talks about? And of course, that's true. When you read about the dimensions of Noah's Ark, you find it's the size of a World War II escort aircraft carrier. Scripture says that God brought the animals to Mr. Noah, and Noah didn't have to go out and capture two of every kind, as the critics of creation say. So we find that Noah's Ark was designed and built by Noah, his family, and probably some of his friends as well, and that it took a century to build the Ark with three decks. It was exquisitely designed to maintain its buoyancy during the Genesis flood. Many of the animals probably went into a state of, of dormancy, a state of hibernation, where Noah and his family weren't run ragged by trying to feed all the animals all of the time. And during times of stress, we find that animals do go into a, a type of dormancy, and certainly that was true during the Genesis flood. So Noah's Ark was built by Noah and his family uh, through the decades to have the kind of compartments that we see around here. Maybe not exactly the same, but certainly something very close. Now, if the Noah's flood was just a local Mesopotamian event, then there would be no reason, no purpose, to go to such detail to build an ark for just a local year-long flood. In Genesis chapter 1, we read not once, but 10 times that God created animals after their kind. And so I think what God is meaning when he is describing 10 times that he created after their kind was that he was leaving no room for evolution, that evolution simply did not come into play at all, God having created after their kind. That includes animals such as this, the feline kind. We have both lions and tigers and the domestic cats, but all are 100% of the cat kind. We see the very formidable dentition, the teeth here of this particular animal. A lot of people seem to think that with those formidable teeth, that that implies a kind of predatory nature. But that's not quite the case. Indeed, one animal that has fangs coming out of its jaw, looking very terrible in its dentition and tooth makeup, is the flying fox of the South Pacific that is a bat that eats exclusively fruits. It's the fruit bat, and it has nothing, the dentition has nothing to do with true predation. And so the kind of dentition we see here could easily also be used in a type of vegetarian existence prior to God cursing the earth. What we also find is that teeth have always been teeth, according to the fossil record. An evolutionist a few years ago said he doesn't know when, where, or how teeth first evolved. And that's so true, because when you look to the fossil record, you find that teeth have always been teeth. And by the way, teeth are very, very complex anatomical structure. There's no way that somebody could formulate an idea of how a tooth came from a non-tooth derivation. It simply doesn't make sense. So teeth have always been teeth, and these animals that we see here have always been the animals that God created in the beginning. The critics of creation say that there's no way Noah's Ark could hold all the species of animal on earth today. And guess what? They're right. Fortunately, the Bible doesn't use the word species. That's an idea that man has formulated through the decades. What the Bible does talk about are the created kinds, which is somewhere around the the family classification when we get into zoology and botany. And so was Noah's Ark large enough to accommodate the various kinds of animals that we see? And the answer is most emphatically yes. There was plenty of room not only for the representative animals but also includes dinosaurs as well. And that's kind of tragic because we see so many of the displays of Noah's Ark in children's books and so forth 
have no reference, no picture of dinosaurs. But dinosaurs certainly were part of God's creation as well. And so all these animals, representative animals, two of each kind, uh, others having eight of each kind, uh, could easily be fit on board Noah's Ark. And that includes Noah and his family. As a matter of fact, there was room to spare on this very large structure. Room to spare for people perhaps that would have uh, come to Christ, come to God, and repented. However, none did, but there was room for them. It's important to realize that the Lord Jesus Christ said in John chapter 10 that he is the door. When we look at Noah's Ark, we find Noah's Ark has been built with just one door. What would happen to people as they went from a place of God's judgment to a place of God's safety and refuge on board the ark? By faith, they had to walk through the door to be saved from God's judgment. Perhaps that was what the Lord Jesus was alluding to in John chapter 10 when he said he was the door. So we can thank God for Noah and the ark and his family and the various animals. We can see the description in Genesis chapter 6 through Genesis chapter 8 and realize that God was talking in literal terms, not only about Noah's flood, but also about the various animals who would populate the ark and come off the ark after the year-long flood to repopulate the world through migration.